so nice and warm. We're at Tbilisi Hills Golf Course in Georgia, the country. I've got some rental clubs. I'll show them to you a little bit later. We're playing from the silver tees because it's the first time playing here. We're not playing the tips. We've got rental clubs. I've got a pack of balls and no tees. We're going to work this golf course out with our GPS watch if it ever picks up the GPS signal. And we're going to have our range finder to find out where to go. Rated number 34 in continental Europe. Not a bad place to be. What a view. Okay, we're in play, straight down the center. Now, why am I in Georgia, players? <laughs> why not? That's all I'm gonna say. We've got 275 left to the pin. The drop is about 20 meters from the tee. Now, look, we're gonna take this Callaway Warbird regular shaft, you know, seven iron, whatever it is. We're gonna get it down 275, and then we're gonna measure there how far we're hitting it because this GPS thing is not picking up the signal. So, we don't know how far we're gonna hit these. So, we'll hit seven, and we'll try to have a wedge in there. Probably gonna draw because of the offset. So I'll try hit a fader. Just punchy punch down there. We'll, we'll get the arms loose as we play. Give it a go, hit some big slinging draws. We're gonna take a pitching wedge here from 89. Uh, I don't wanna fly the sand wedge all the way there. I'm gonna try chip this pitching. The pins at the back, let it roll up. If I hit the sand wedge and I hit it too hard, I'm worried about going over the back. I think I have a better chance with this. And maybe even, maybe, let's see if I pitch it on the green. Maybe I'll hit a seven and pitch it short of the green, let it roll up. I thought I was a clever boy, but a little bit too clever for my own good. I've rolled just over the green here though. I've got my, I got my flat white and, and a pretty simple chip really. Just got to make sure I make contact with the ball. A little sandy wedge from the pretty good lie. The grass is really different here. It's really fine. So it may take a bit of time for me to get used to, but let's rotate, rotate, chip it in baby. Wow, hey! Okay, there's a little yellowish tree back there that I'm gonna hit the five iron toward. And if it goes about two hundred, we're probably gonna have something like a, like an eight or seven iron in. And I'm very happy with that. I'm a very happy boy. And if this thing draws as I expect it to, I can start it just right of that tree and let it draw ski in ski. Yeah, the regular graphite shafts are gonna do that draw and I'm quite happy with that. It's right at the tree. Maybe it should have gone a bit right of that tree, but first time playing, a bit of a blind shot. What an easy life we have. We've come directly at the tree I was aiming at. We finished just here. I don't think there's any problem on the backswing. Beautiful hole, guarded by a bunker there to clear that bunker lip, 94. Not a problem, 156 to the pin. We're at altitude, so I don't know the distances. I'm gonna guess if I shoot back to the tee with my rangefinder to see how far we've hit this. About 212, it's gone about 212. So the, the altitude is probably helping a bit. Just let's not forget this in the tree. Okay, let's not, let's not hack the tree to pieces either. Oh, beautiful. Just a, I think a little right of the pin. I think the slope is gonna counteract the offset. Down grain. Uh, a little bit steery. And we are just on the right side there, chipping across the green. Not the best shot, but what a beautiful setting. Not too bad, a bit of a big miss, but luckily there's lots of space on the right. I have to get used to those irons first. Now, this looks like very slopey greens. Take a lower loft pitching wedge because this is going to add loft to the shot. I have no clue how to read these. This is all bent grass again. So I'm probably going to overread them a little bit. Let's just see what happens if I go straight at it. Okay, a little soft, a little soft. Okay, I should have probably checked how much slope there actually is. It was quite uphill here. Maybe a better option would be to have floated it with a sand wedge to where I am now. Ah, oh, beautiful. Good roll. Not a bad bogue skis. It's 159 playing 143 effective distance. So 
143 down the hill, little breeze off that way. Ball's gonna go real high because of those clubs, gonna get affected more by the breeze. A bit of altitude, a drop down, 143. We're gonna try the pitching, but try and knock it down a little bit. Again, it's a Callaway Warbird pitching wedge, regular shaft with a bit of tape over here. I'm not sure if that's for swing weight or anything, but it's okay, changing the angle a bit and looking for tees all the time. That's a good one, if I don't find this one that I'm hitting. I'm gonna hit a pitching wedge, just a standard shot. At the pin, hopefully it draws off the pin, and if it doesn't, that's a bonus. I don't know where that is. Is it right of the pin? Okay, just short and right. A bit of a poofy strike, but we've got ourselves another broken tee. That's all we want. Luckily, we hit some downslope here. There was, I don't know, not really a great strike. I don't know if the club choice is good. But this sand wedge seems like it's not enough. I think I'm going to take a pitching wedge, chip it normal, let it run up. Okay, sand wedge was probably the correct play. Ish! Okay, let's have a look at this bad boy. Looked like it came left to right off that chip, so I'm guessing right to left on this. Bent grass greens. Haven't played on them since America. So I'm looking at this and I'm seeing like a cup of break, but that might be my Bermuda eyes. <sighs> Definitely a cup of break. So what I pick up on the cart is that it's there's two fairways. Like down there is fine. Like you can slice it big or straight down here is good. There's that little middle pocket there, which seems to be the like trouble, but that opens up after 225. Now I've got a five wood here, but we're into the breeze. So I'm going to Send it, send it straight at that junk, but hopefully draw it. Because if you draw it, we're in the, the wider section of the fairway. And if it goes straight in the junk, I don't know, it looks pretty sparse to me. So, And if we hit a slicer, we'll be fine. But I'm really hoping for the big draw off that junk. Okay, it's a little right of the junk, so... Probably hasn't gone that far, went really high. Yep, saw it come down there, not too bad. I wanted that little snap draw around the left there, but got really lucky as well. I found this in the broken tee bin. I have to be really careful. I might try glue it back together, but we found a tee for the driver. So we've got 127 yards to the hole. I'm not gonna screw around here. We're gonna just take a pitching wedge, just put it a bit right of the pin. I don't wanna miss greens anymore. So let's just get the pin out of our mind and hit this one real good, a kind of punchy. Hopefully the offset will draw it back in. Yes, we hit a green, man. I'm a green hitter. Hey, what a birdie. Hey, Bermuda, bent grass doesn't matter to me. It's not going to go very far, but it's straight. I'm trying to hit big, big fades with these because I think it's going to just snap left all the time. And if I think it's going to snap left, I'm going to make it snap left. But we'll get there. Doing good. Just absolutely stunning. That's the clubhouse up there and up on over here. Not sure, some kind of church or something. Beautiful. A bit left. Oh, that looks dead too. <laughs> Little bit deados. Okay, that looks good. Looks real good. Oh, it doesn't turn at the end. Matty, what a putter. The green is actually just down there, but I mean, I don't know the driver, so if I hit it over here, it's just a complete crap shoot. So I'm gonna hit a six iron and try to leave myself a sandy wedge or a pitchy wedgie in. Just hit it straight up the chute there. I think it's gonna draw, so I'm just gonna aim it at the left edge of that bunker, just left of it, so if it stays straight, we're all good as well. Stays dead straight, of course, but it has, Cleared the bunker. Beautiful, beautiful shot. 
<laughs> lucky, but we'll take it. Wind's picking up, we've got 98, probably a full sandwich, probably a full sandwich. Wind's off the right, just put it a bit, a bit right here. So the wind will bring it in. 98 yarder, we don't know how far it goes, but sandwiches are normally about 90. Yeah, right on the back edge. Right on the back edge, so it's a bit further than 100, and it was a very soft swing. So I think the altitude plays, plays a part as well. We've hit the back edge here. Like, I've got the longest putt you could, no, maybe not the longest, probably over there is the longest putt you can have on the green. But you know, we're on the green, we've got ourselves a putt. Some days you feel like chipping is gonna be better than having a long putt, which, you know, you can, you can use that to your advantage and actually just leave it short there or something like that. Or even purposefully miss greens. But I like it. It's a good roll on here. I just, I don't really actually know the pace. I'm just kind of guessing every time. So I'm gonna go with an even 10 on this, maybe 9.5. Send this out way right, and I think it's gonna break in at the end again. It's just about the pace though, you know? You don't wanna leave them. Yeah, that's it. That's good enough, you know? Just stops within three feet, a little two and a half footer. Put that away for the day. Seal the deal. Just like that. What a life. What a beautiful hole. We've got two 10-ish to clear the end of that bunker there. Because they put us off the forward tees. They, they've closed one of the tee boxes for some maintenance. So we're going to hit the five wood. Because the five iron is just not going to get over that, um, that bunker. We've got too much risk. So let's just go straight over the bunker, even with a mediocre strike. Let's expect the draw. I did not see that ball. Okay. I think I saw it land just on the left side there. Pretty solid hit. Okay, we've got like we've got like 215 to the flag there, but I don't really want to hit that because I don't know what's up there. I want to hit it short of that and just lay it up with two sand wedges or something like that. We've got people in front of us, so I'm not going to wait and then hit some shuri shot in a bunker or something. Because, like, I'm not really that confident over 180 or something. So I'm going to hit a sandy wedge just up there. Yep, that's perfect. Now we've got another sandy wedge in and we're going to make a birdie. Okay, judging by that previous sand wedge I hit, not from 98 we went a bit long and i still haven't hit the center of the face on the sandwich look at this chips and everything is all coming out here it probably has to do with the swing weighting and you know the length of the clubs so 115 117 up the hill i think it's going to be downwind a good sandy wedge and if we can hold this green we're putting for the birdie yep we're on the green little right little short but it's all good okay beautiful beautiful view S simply stunning and the ball has actually i thought it landed on the front but it didn't it's actually rolled up nice and tight nice and tight got ourselves probably a 12 footer for the bird ski well judged by Matty boom boom pitch mark was about 20 feet from the the ball so those clubs are not high spinning that's for sure all the greens are firm now let's have a little look at this we've got the sun at that direction the shades coming here the hole is there the flags on the ground pulling gravity that way the city's there it has to break right to left and we're gonna say two and a half cups I'm gonna keep my head up on this one due to confidence reasons Oh, you son of a gun. That was such a good read. Here's the driver I've got now. I don't know if you can see this, but there's some ding-dings over here. One ding, two dings. I like to call it a ding-ding. And it looks like it's um, not really in the best shape. It's a Warb Warbird 10.5. Regular shaft. Luckily, I have AT that I found. We have such a wide space. It turns 90 degrees. So, like, once you go over 220 yards, it's just basically all 220 to 280. So if I hit a draw, if I hit a fade, if I hit it straight, 
we're all good here just because of that dog leg right 90 degrees. So I'm going to just pump it straight over that bunker and hope for the best. Left or right, anything's fine. Okay, a little fader, and that should be perfect. Stunning, stunning and brave shot. Very stunning. Okay, we've got 80, 85 yards, 87 yards. I'm gonna try a partial sandwich here. A full one goes 115, so we'll go with like a three quarter half shot. Not so sure about that. Could bounce up. We'll go have a look up there, but 50-50. Well, I think uh, the course rolls a bit firmer. I'm not used to such a firm course because in Thailand that would just stop right there, but it, it bounced short and rolled right up here. Got real lucky. Didn't even see it till the first shot had finished. Normally you hit a shot in Thailand, it just lands and then you go keep walking. I walk to go put the club away and the ball keeps moving. Now, big right to left. Uh, Big right to left mover. Now, could be my Bermuda eyes, but I'm giving this about three feet of break. Looks good. Oh, man, alive. I've got 159, 157 yards. No, 150 yards. So we're going to take the nine iron. It's really tricky. I don't know. The, the wind is into us, but it feels like a pitching wedge, but I don't see a pitching wedge getting there. So we can hit the niner. As long as we clear that bunker, we're good. Oh, that doesn't look like a good flight at all. Okay, it's, it's right of the bunker. So if it's a bit short, that's gonna be okay. As long as it's not in that damn bunker. In the head. Okay, a little bit long, but we've got to hit the green, right? Now the problem is, ooh, Oh, oh, if I had gone another two feet, I'm down there and I'm hitting upper, upper tier. Very scary. Good green, good view. What a life. Yeah, we're going to go. We're going to swing it. Maybe a foot and a half outside the left. Oh, maybe a bit much. Oh, man, alive. I can't, I can't get a break here. I can't catch a break. What a beautiful nine holes. Now let's go finish the second nine as the sun goes down on Tbilisi. What a life. Got a long ass hole here. I'm going to hit the driver at the first orange tree I see there. I'm going to hope for the draw. If it fades, I think we're still in play. Maybe not that first one. Maybe I'll go at the bunker up on the right of the fairway up there. So we're going to hit this driver with the two ding dings in it. Try hit a fader on it because the shaft is so flexible. I want to just get a fader. Yeah, that's going to work. Up the left side. I like that a lot. Let's go chip it closer and we edge our way toward the green. I'm going to hit a 6 iron from 311. I think we've got about 311. This is a pretty good range finder. Voice Caddy L5. Really good. Picks up stuff from far. Better than a, better than a bush now. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. This thing picks up stuff that's in front of backgrounds. Much better than the bush now from distance like this. So 311. We're going to hit a 6 iron. The clear that bunker is 160. So I'm gonna go just over the right edge of that bunker and expect about 170 to 180 yards. Uh-oh, dead. That's gonna be a tough shot down there, but we'll go find it. Just try to steer it a bit too much. Should have trust the big hooker. Now we don't have much hope. We've got a tree really close to us. I could get it up in time. I could get it up in time. I'm not sure what distance we have. The pin is directly over the tallest part of this tree in front of me. So we're uphill a bit, probably about 130 yards to the middle. 130 yards to the middle. I'm going to have to try to get this a bit higher, quicker. And I like this shot. My favorite escape shots are these ones. So just place it off the front foot a bit more and just get it right under it. Wow, that's good, but it's going to be short. Well, really good at the pin. It's going to be short though. Good shot. Okay, we're in the sand for the first time. This, it's been a bit raked up here by a machine. It looks real nice and tasty and fluffy. Got this beautiful sand wedge. Got a lot of weight in the head. So I think I'm going to enjoy this out the sand. 
got an uphill lie, really can get a, have a go at it. Oh man, that's the shot of the day. That's the shot of the day. Look at that. What a day. What a Georgia on my mind. What a par baby. What a up and down, you know? They call me Sandman. Look at the hole. Now it's downhill, so it's a little quicker. So you want to feel a little bit. Oh, that's too much. That's too much. Just feel a little one like this. Little nice and smooth. There we go. Okay, do that on the ball. Perfect. That's the shot. In the cup. <laughs> if we get that thing going right to left, I'm going to really love this hole. If we stay right, we've got an easy chip. I've beaten that one. That's probably the greatest strike of my life. And it's just coming up a bit short even. Oof, it's a long one. I think it's maybe like more like 230 to that pin. We've got this pin right in a little, the only little valley dip they have. It's like right in there, like a saucer. So I'm gonna try to get this to bump and run to the lip of that crater and let it just die in. I mean, I don't know how to do that, honestly, to be fair. I haven't. I don't know these clubs, but we're going to send it out right, let it break in, pitch it a couple yards on the green. Maybe a bit much, hit the hole. Oh boy, stop, stop. A little too much. We, we're not even on the green yet. <laughs> okay, now let's make this, let's drain it. This is the most diabolical pin position in the world. Mm. Par threes have not been my forte today. I think I bogeyed all of them. Four bogeys, three bogeys on the par threes. Beautiful nine this, I kind of prefer this nine to the first nine. First nine was pretty simple, but this one just looks stunning. Nice orange, reds, just beautiful. And the grass is in such good condition. I haven't had to play preferred lies at all, just like a carpet. Gonna hit this five iron, same thing. Up the center, over the cart path, hope for a draw ski. Straight ski is okay ski, but not in the bunker ski. Yep, we're in a bunker. But you know me, enter Sandman. Dee 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 dee. <laughs> 147 yards up the hill. Seems like a very firm bunker. This is. This is very different to the bunker shot I just hit up there. This, this is dry, some rocks, some stones. I'm in a bit of a footprint. Got a big stone in front of us there. Looks like construction material. So we're gonna hit the niner up the hill and hold it a bit left because there's a big ass bunker on the right. So try hitting it at one of those spindly orange trees. Go, get up. I don't know, I think that's on. It's a beautiful little fader right at the pin. I don't know how this works. Oh, that's nice, so. Very nice, so. Got real lucky there, a little fader, and it actually was a spectacular shot. We've got a big downslope. This camera's going on a big, a tier about two feet above the hole, so I'm glad I got that to where I got it. But you know, sometimes we as amateurs don't understand how good the shots we hit are. Like that shot was so good. But I just take it for granted. I'm like, yeah, I expect that. But you can't just expect that because even for a pro, that's a good shot. You know, 147 from the sand. Proximity. One, two, three, four. We're looking at like 12 to 15 feet here from the sand from 147. I mean, you got to look at that and say, man, I hit a great shot. Not just like, oh, a little right, oh, yeah, hit it, faded it. No, you have to really appreciate it. And then not get so angry with the bad shots, because this is pro level, so I should be like, wow. Then when I hit a bad one, I tug up there, that's just outside of pro proximity, now I'm angry. What, what are we doing here? We're amateurs. Okay, this one is a tough one to read. We've got 161 down breeze, so I'm going to hit the niner. I think these are a bit lower lofted. Uh, they're not really my shafts or whatever, but if I can get this up in the breeze, I think 155, 156 should be a good landing spot for this. Beauty. Oh, 
I'll hit that way off the toe. It's about 40 yards short. Ooh, that's, that's not clever and it's not good. Now let's try scramble one par out of the four. Because, I mean, really, not great. Not great, Maddie. Maddie. Come on, stop closer. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost there to a par. We've got three and a bit feet of real estate left. We could get a par. We could get a par for a par three. Huge pressure. Whatever happens though, today golf is a real winner. Golf is the, <laughs> golf is a real winner. Golf one, Matt zero. Come on, left to right. You hate these, Matty. But you know, if you put them out far enough left, they'll slide right in there. Lube it up. Slide it in. <sighs> this is not Bermuda. This is not Bermuda. This is bent. God damn it. Plus four for the par threes. God damn it. Ugh. Okay, let's go. Okay, it's 236 to carry that bunker there. And it looks like after that, it widens on the left side as well as the right side. So it's worth a try with a driver. I'm gonna give it straight at the right edge of that bunker. Draw, fade, whatever we do, we take. I'm gonna try hit a fader. Well, I've hit it right. We may have some trouble down there, but it's nearly the end. Let's go get some wine. One of the things that gets often discounted is that like in Thailand, the, the course is so wide, man. It's so easy, bro. Yeah, but what borders the, the wide fairways is water. So this would be water, dead, take a drop, ball gone, not a great feeling. What I find here, and on all parkland courses, I find the golf balls. It's the best. At least I have a shot now. So this is why I love parkland. I lose much fewer golf balls, find a lot more, and then stay in play, which reduces the score automatically. This is automatic one to two shots added at a Thai golf course with water bordering the fairway. Here, I don't know. Let's see. We could even still get on in two. I mean, on in three. We could still get on in three. Okay, we're just going to clear this tree. Lie seems okay. Bit of grass behind the ball. But I mean, looks like there's some fur away over there. Commit. Wreck it. Oh, look at that. Okay, beautiful. Let's go find that. Okay, we've got 127. Good recovery. Lucky boy. A little bit further right and we're down in the, in the bush belt over there. We've got 127 up the hill. We're going to hit a solid thing. shot there, little fader, great shot. I got really lucky there again. I was trying to hit the draw to the pin and if I had and been short, I'm down there putting up two feet below the hole and I faded it. So I got real lucky. I'm going to take that luck and run. I know with a distance control though, it's going to be a good shot. For some reason the 125 range with the pitching wedge is really up my alley. Up my Hershey Highway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, has to break right to left, has to. Everything breaks to the bloody city. It looks like it. Must be. But foot and a half right. Come on, Matty. Come on. Second bird of the day. Come on, my boy. Yes, Matty. Oh, he's got the Bermuda reading. That's Bermuda break, not bent break. It's because I'm not bent. I am Bermuda. Okay, we'll take the par. One thing that's not really talked about much on golf courses is routing, right? Or routing. That, like, you know where to go after every hole. Sometimes you play courses, you get completely confused. You end up on the wrong hole. Don't know which path to take. This one is routed perfectly. I haven't been confused the whole way. Know exactly where the next tee is. Good signage. I love that kind of thing. That makes a, a big difference to your experience, especially when you haven't played before, you know? Okay. Let's see. 142, 9-iron. 142 nine iron ski up the hill probably playing 155 come on nice strike hitting little faders now 
I'm not sure if that's on the green. It's a bit right of the hole, but it's a beautiful shot. But another like two, three yard fader. Now with my luck, I've hit that. I hit a fader and the other ones have worked out well. Now I finally hit a good shot on a par three. And I mean, that pin is in the toughest position. You have to hit a draw in line or past the pin. Anywhere else, you're pretty screwed. So I've probably got the best miss, lucky, on the green. We just need to get enough on this. Get it up the hill. It's going to swing big from the right. Let's not be shy, Matty Boom Boom. We want to get this up the hill. Yep, just like that, just like that. Look, it's not past the hole, but you know, it's a tap-in ski for my first pass ski on a par three ski, trying to bring the golf holics back to life ski. Look at that, how beautiful. How beautiful is that? Now we've got this hole ski, a beautiful hole ski but like it's way too much to carry the water down there. So, I'm just gonna hit my five iron short of the water, well short, probably about 60 yards short, and we'll make a plan from there, you know. This is life in the fast lane. This is how we do it. Go at that red stake, hope for the draw. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Yeah, that's a good shot. Beautiful shot. Just stay short of that bunker. Oh, Matthew. 89 yarder. Not really a good one. I don't like these partial ones with a sand wedge. I mean, inside 100 with a with a bunker shot. Not easy. So we'll give this like a three-quarter sand wedge. Keep that chin up. Yeah, it's difficult, you know. It's difficult. It's probably going to roll up quite close, but that one, I don't know if we should do like a chip shot, you know, like a pitching wedge or a nine iron, just chip it out. But we, it is what it is. Shouldn't have gone in in the first place. I feel like I'm losing control of this five iron, so I'm gonna hit a six iron. Because everybody knows Maddie's favorite club is a six iron. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Yes, you see, six iron is my jam. Doesn't matter what club it is. Six iron for days. Okay, 152, 152 into the breeze. Let's take the, I don't know. No, let's take the niner, let's take the niner. Short is better here. We'll just put a little bit short, chip and a put, or we'll put it right next to the hole. Come on, come on, go. Oh, what a bounce. Bounced way right. What in the hell was that? That was such a delightful shot. I was punished for nothing. If I didn't have, if I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Okay, there's not much hope for us here. We, we got unlucky. We missed the green by a couple yards, and that huge bank kicked it down. I think from if I to do it again, I'd probably hit the eight and further left. Now all I've brought is the sandwich here. Got a tree in our way. Let's see if we can get this on the green somehow. Keep it low. Off the back foot. Come on, Matty. Oh, that's long. That's long. I was trying to bump it into the top of the slope there. That's... I don't even know what's there. But it's, it's not... It's not promising. It's not promising. From middle of the fairway to not promising. Stop, please. Please, ball. What a promising finish. Now, not so promising. Not so promising, Maddie. Oh, Maddie Boom Booms. What a day. What a view. Gonna go get some Georgian bread. Have some Georgian wine. What the hell? What a life is this? What a beautiful life. Look at this view. 
Look at the view to the abyss. Oh, we nearly tied it up for the bogey. Try seven iron, 188 playing 178 into the breeze. Let's do a seven. Six is going to be too much. Oh boy, I think the wind's got that left. I don't know what's left here. But that's a good shot. Just pulled it a little bit with the. Actually, I got really lucky. I thought I, I thought that the pin was on the left of the green because I saw the fairway up there, like an optical illusion made it look like the green was way right but that turned out to be probably one of my best shots of the day look at that view all open land i don't know what but it's beautiful come on maddie let's make the birds do. let's make the birdie what a finish what a finish what a beautiful golf I'd love to play that every day of the week, especially when it's that quiet.